All feta style cheese may be delicious, but they are not all created equally. For example, after watching this video, you'll understand why I wouldn't advise picking up the pre-crumbled stuff. And if there was a person from Greece with me right now, they wouldn't even call this other block that I buy all the time, real feta cheese. Feta cheese is one of my favorites to have in the fridge, but understanding what type of feta you actually have available has some pretty unique implications on how we cook with it and consume it. So let's break it down. While feta originated in Greece, there are several variations nowadays, some of which has actually led to disputes in the EU courts. But at its most basic, feta or feta style cheese has a flavor that is very salty and slightly acidic with a texture that is creamy and crumbly, and this is all due to how it's made. To achieve this, a sheep, goat's, or cow's milk, more on that milk type in a bit, is acidified, curdled, cut, and drained like a lot of other cheeses, but what gives it this signature flavor profile is packing the cheese in a brine to ripen for a couple of months. This process makes feta have some pretty unique qualities. Number one, it's salty. Very salty. According to On Food and Cooking, most cheeses contain between 1.5 to 2% salt by weight, whereas feta can be all the way up to 5%. And when added to a dish, it amplifies the flavor of the food it touches. Second, feta has a really tight protein structure, meaning that it doesn't melt or break when it's heated. I took some other common cheeses and threw all of them in the microwave together. And after bringing them out, you can see that the cheddar has started to split into the fat and proteins. The American melts into a uniform mass due to some of those stabilizers. However, feta doesn't break or melt. It kind of just gets creamy. Third and last, due to being packed in a salty brine, the cheese actually lasts a lot longer than other cheeses due to that high salt level and also being submerged in the liquid just like pickles. Now before you pick up any feta cheese at the store and start using it on everything like I do, we actually need to understand the differences between the different offerings at the store. In general, there are three distinct variables in the feta that you see at the store. Number one is the form factor, crumbles versus the full block. Number two is the milk type, sheep, goat, or cow. Number three is brine or no brine. So in general, I suggest picking up the full block if you have the option. First, the crumbles cost more. It's not astronomical, but come on, you are literally paying for what takes two seconds to do by hand. These pre-crumbled containers also typically have starch or cellulose added to prevent caking, which is decent for crumbling, but you miss completely out on that creaminess. And in general, I do not like the flavor and texture as much, just try these side by side, but this could be partly due to the other factors. Speaking of, let's talk milk type. In general, there are three types of milk that can be used. Sheep, goat, a mix of sheep and goat, or cow's milk. But what's the difference between them? So sheep and goat milk feta is higher in fat, which makes it a creamier texture than its cow milk counterpart, which is much lower in fat. In terms of flavor, the sheep milk feta is gonna be sharper than the milder goat and cow. And if you do want real authentic Greek feta from Greece, it must either be all sheep milk or a mix of no more than 30% goat milk. And you'll actually be able to tell with this protected designation of origin from the European Union, which means it's exclusively made in the defined geographical area, in this case, Greece. There's actually an entire page on this if you wanna read some more. Now, just because a feta is from Greece and it has the PDO stamp does not mean it inherently tastes better. It was just made under those certain specifications. You may or may not like feta made with sheep milk. Maybe you like 100% goat milk instead, or you like the feta cheese style they make from France. However, knowing that different milk does lead to differences in flavors, and actually maybe more importantly, there's a really big difference in the texture. Here's two basic experiments. First, a basic spread test. I took some cow's milk feta and real Greek sheep's milk feta and spread them both on some pita bread. And due to the higher fat content of the milk, the Greek feta is actually spreadable and stays on the pita unlike its cow's milk counterpart. The second experiment, a heat test. I took some cow milk crumbles, real Greek feta, and a block of cow's milk, and then heated them all in the microwave for 45 seconds. And after pulling them out, we can see that the cow's milk variations are basically the same in terms of structure, except they're almost bouncy, while the real Greek feta gets creamier. So for example, if you are using it to make the uni feta pasta, yes, that viral TikTok pasta, 
grab the sheep or goats variety for a much creamier texture. I used 100% goat milk for this version and it makes a big, big difference if you are using them in these hot applications. In general, here's a recap of the various milk. So cow's milk has less fat and is less creamy. It's also a little bit milder in flavor, not as good for hot applications. Sheep or goat's milk have much more fat and are creamier, spreadable, great for cold and hot, though they do have some differences in flavor. Also, I should point out that sheep or goat's milk is gonna be more expensive, can typically be two to three times more per ounce, just depends on how much you're buying. And in practice, I actually keep both varieties on hand. I love using the sheep's or goat version for hot pastas and that spreadability, but I keep the cow's milk because it's cheaper, it's lower calorie, still tastes great, and it's typically the one that I can find sold still in its brine, which has a couple of unique benefits. Let me talk why. So at the store, the feta will typically be sold in either a container submerged in a brine or in a sealed package. And if you can find it sold in the brine, I say pick it up. First, it lasts a lot longer after opening since it's not in contact with the air. It's sitting in that salty liquid, which is one of the oldest forms of preserving foods. And according to one website, this will make it last four to six weeks after opening compared to just one to two. Secondly, that taste will stay fresher longer. I mean, it's chilling in the salty brine, which is gonna keep it at that perfect equilibrium. And lastly, after the cheese is done, you can still use that brine to say make a vinaigrette or you could pour some over to brine a chicken breast. So in conclusion, feta cheese can be one of the stars of a dish, or maybe you just add a little sprinkle of it to give that dish the missing saltiness and slight acidity that you need. And like I mentioned here, I typically keep two on hand, this one in the brine, so I can just pop it back in there and it stays fresh for a lot longer in the fridge. And then I'll pick up the authentic stuff if I want kind of a sheep's or goat milk flavor a little bit creamier, a little bit fattier, and it works really well in those hot pasta applications. But that's gonna wrap it up for me in this one. If you guys learned something, subscribe now for more, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace, y'all.